Hi class, in today's lecture I'm going to show you guys how to calculate price elasticity of demand. The actual calculations here are pretty straightforward. The essential parts of this problem are remembering how we're going to define price elasticity of demand and the technique that we'll use to be using uh, to be calculating percentage change. So let's jump right in. You can see on the board behind me here I have a demand curve that you might use to calculate price elasticity of demand. So we've got here two corresponding data points, A and B, where there's both price and quantity demanded information. So that's all we need for calculating price elasticity of demand. Okay, so this might be given to you in a problem setup. What I've circled here would be the information that you would be expected to know. Right? First up, you're going to want to know how price elasticity of demand is calculated. What's the formula for putting together this one number? And here we have it, the typical form. Price elasticity of demand is going to be the absolute value of the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price. Right? So for a given price change, we want to know just how much more or how much fewer uh, of the given product that people end up buying. Right? For both of these calculations, both the percentage change in quantity and percentage change in price, what we have in the numerator and denominator respectively here, you're going to use this technique for calculating percentage change. Um, different instructors, different professors will have different ways of showing you how to calculate percentage change. And it's not that one technique is right or wrong, but um, for the purposes of my class at least, I want everybody to use percentage, uh, the midpoint method here of percentage change. Um, different instructors might have a different technique and that's okay. All right, so let's get right to it. So when calculating price elasticity of demand, you're going to want to do this in parts. Right, so break this down and first do either the numerator or the denominator, then do the other one, slap them together, and then you'll have price elasticity of demand. So I always like to do the percentage change in quantity first. Right? So that means I'm going to use this midpoint method for percentage change applied to, of course, the quantity number. So I need to look at the 45 and 40 here while ignoring altogether the price data. Okay. Got two points there, A and B. I want to designate one of them as our starting point and then one, the quantity that we move to, just to keep things straight. And this is an arbitrary choice. So you're going to get the same answer at the end of the day, regardless of which one you call new and which one you call old. But nonetheless, I like to label it just so that I don't confuse myself. All right, so I'm going to say that our new quantity here is going to correspond to the point B, and our old one correspond to the point A, right? So the narrative might be that initially the price was 75, and then the price fell to 70, as opposed to the opposite. All right, so that's going to help us in setting up the problem. So we're going to calculate then this percentage change in quantity demanded using this formula with these particular numbers. All right, so on top, we want the difference between the two quantities, right? So that's an easy calculation to do. To find the difference, you're just going to subtract one from the other, right? Uh, so new minus old, my new quantity is 45. I'll subtract from that my old quantity. All right, easy. Next, in the denominator, right? This is the midpoint method of percentage change. So we're going to divide this by the midpoint of those two quantities. In other words, the average, right? You guys can likely just eyeball that average just by looking at 40 and 45. But just to be totally thorough, let's go ahead and use the formula. The way that we'll get the average between those two quantities is to add them up, new plus old, and then divide it by 2. So we're going to then have 45 plus 40 divided by 2. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to express this as a percentage rather than as a decimal. So I'm going to multiply that whole thing by 100. Let me tilt the camera a little bit. There we go. So now it's just a matter of arithmetic. You've set up the hard part, you've remembered what it is. Let's go ahead and start simplifying this thing. So the percentage change in quantity demanded then, on top I'm gonna have five divided by the sum of 45 and 40, which will be 85 over two, multiplied by 100. So I'll just go ahead and go through all the steps here. Percentage change in quantity demanded then is gonna be five, over 85.2 in the denominator, so that'll be, what, 42 and a half times 100. And then lastly, we want to express this as a percent, so percentage change in quantity demanded is going to be a 
11.76, just like that. Very good. So we're going to set this aside, that 11.6%, and we're going to end up putting that up here in the network. All right. We got the same thing now, same exact calculation, but now we want to look at the price numbers. So for percentage change in price, right? again, we're referring to our graph. Now we're considering the 75 and the 70 while ignoring the points. Other than that, it's the same exact technique. So we'll go a little quicker on this one. Right? So now my new price minus my old is going to be 70 minus 75. You can straight away see that there's going to be a negative percentage change on the price. We're going to divide that by the average of these two, which I'm going to get by adding together, 70 plus 75, divide it by 2, and then multiplying that by 1 here. All right. Once you've done that, this should simplify to percentage change in price of negative 6.9%. Okay. We're almost done. Last step here for calculating price elasticity of demand is to take those two percentage change uh, that we've identified, percentage changes that we've identified, and put them into this larger formula for elasticity of demand. Let's do that right here. Price elasticity of demand in this case would be the absolute value of 11.6, that's gonna go right there, 11.76, divided by the percentage change in the price, a negative 6.9. And so that's going to tell me that the price elasticity of demand in this particular case is going to be 1.71. There we go. That's our final answer. Price elasticity of demand is 1.71. That's a number that's greater than 1. And therefore, you can draw the conclusion that demand for this particular product is classified as elastic rather than being inelastic.